So it's finally happened. Asahi Linux on Mac now has better OpenGL graphics support than Apple's own implementation on macOS. Yes, that's right. That means that Asahi Linux, that small, tiny, independent project dedicated to getting Linux working on bare metal on Apple's silicon hardware, now has to pass Apple at their own game. Now, partly this is due to the fact that Apple abandoned the open source graphics support in preference for a proprietary metal graphics API. Apple decided to deprecate OpenGL, and right now macOS only supports OpenGL up to version 4.1, However, now the Asahi Linux team have achieved the impossible and have implemented drivers that are conformant to the latest OpenGL versions, passing over 100,000 tests to ensure correctness, adding their OpenGL 4.6 and ES 3.2 to the list. So what does this mean for Mac gamers? Well, right now, not a huge amount. Yes, in certain admittedly narrow tests where Asahi Linux runs rings around macOS's implementation of OpenGL 4.1. But the exciting part of this news is really about Asahi Linux's future. OpenGL 4.6 is but a step stone to a full implementation of the Vulkan graphics API. This is huge because many of the most popular games and emulators use Vulkan and currently can't be played on macOS, but could potentially be played on Asahi Linux in the future once Vulkan support is fully implemented. And furthermore, the Vulkan graphics API is also an important part of Proton, the compatibility layer which makes the Steam Deck SteamOS play Windows games so well. And if Vulkan could be implemented on Asahi Linux, then it could open up future support for Proton, and we could finally see Apple Silicon Mac hardware get game compatibility close to what the Steam Deck can achieve, including all of the anti-cheat exception games for Proton, for example games like Apex Legends, Halo Master Chief Collection, DayZ, etc. Now even if Vulkan's support were eventually implemented, there are still other obstacles to overcome. For example, Asahi Linux is compiled to use 16k pages. If Proton-like compatibility is to happen, then there needs to be some kind of support for 4k pages, which is used by x86 64-bit games, which basically means all Windows games. Now there are some solutions in the works for this problem, including the use of micro virtual machines. Now I'm too much of a Linux noob to really understand what this means, but I know that the problem is being worked on and progress is extremely promising. So in this video today, I'm going to be going through a full tutorial on how to install Asahi Linux on your Apple Silicon Mac, how to set up the new OpenGL 4.6 drivers, and how to test out various games, including Minecraft, as well as Nintendo Switch emulation via Reujinx, as well as other Linux ARM64 games and compare their performance to macOS. And as always, I really encourage people who are invested in the future of Mac gaming to go to Markin's Patreon page. This is the main donation point for the Asahi Linux project. And just to temper your expectations, this is an operating system written without any documentation from Apple, where all the drivers had to be reverse engineered by a very small team, and where hardware support is a constant moving target, with new Apple Silicon Macs being released every few months. Nevertheless, what the Asahi Linux team has achieved is absolutely astounding, so please make sure to support the project. So the first thing that we're going to do is to go to the asahilinux.org website, which I'll leave a link to in the description, and basically we're going to follow the instructions on the website. So the first thing you should do is to double check that you have a supported device. So click on this device support list. Basically, if you have a device with an M1 or an M2, basically these are currently supported. The M3 generation isn't supported yet, but will be in the future. And uh, you can also check out some of the features that are available. Not all the features are going to be working. USB-C displays aren't working, Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 is not working, microphone and touch ID are not working either. The other thing to be aware of is that this is very much a work in progress. So there's lots of things which aren't working at the moment. And you should also be aware that this is in development. So you might want to make sure that you have a backup of all of your data. So on your Mac, make sure that you don't have anything important on this particular device. Make sure that there's nothing on this computer that you can't afford to lose. If you have any important information, just make sure it's backed up correctly. And then we can go ahead and move on to the basically the first step. So I'm going to go on to the top right hand side on Spotlight. I'm going to type in the word terminal and I'm going to open up a terminal window. So within this terminal window, what we're going to do is to copy and paste this terminal command here. So just click on this icon here to copy it into your clipboard. And then within terminal, I'm going to right click or command V and then paste this command here. So the other thing to be aware of is that we need to have enough space. So on your computer, if you get a general, you can check your storage here. Basically, you need about 80 gigabytes of space in total. So make sure you have that before we can move on to the next step. So now within Terminal, what we're going to do is to enter this command and press return. And then it's going to start this download process. It's going to make this a bit bigger so you can see this properly. So now it's asking us to type in our password. So this is basically our Mac login password, the password that you probably use to log into your computer. Just type that in. 
just be aware that when you're typing in a password, you can't see anything here, but it's been typed in in the background, it's invisible. Just press return and that will enter the password for you there. Now it's asking us to press enter to continue. So press enter, saying collecting system information. This is our Mac. So this is the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Max chip. And basically this is a fresh installation. You can see here, this is our APFS volume. That's our system recovery volume. And basically what it's asking us to do is that we need to resize the partition. So basically within your Mac, you have an APFS partition. If you look at it, it this is all consumed basically by the Mac OS. And what we want to do is partition this so that Asahi Linux can take up a proportion of the internal solid state drive. So just type in R and then return to resize an existing partition. And then we need to determine what size we want to have. This is going to determine what percentage or how much space Mac OS is actually available to use. So I have a one terabyte drive here. So what I'm going to do is I want to say 500 gigabytes. So it's basically 500 gigabytes to Mac OS and then 450 something to Asahi Linux. That's plenty. Um, but this really depends on the size of your solid state drive. So you need about 80 gigabytes minimum for Asahi Linux. So what I would do is either use the minimum command, the min command here, or just type in either a percentage or a actual size that you want your Mac drive to be. So I'm going to type in 500 GB and press return. And it says here, your system may appear to freeze during the resize. This is normal. Just continue until the process completes. Press Y here and press return. So this is basically doing all the work in the background to change the APFS drive so that it can accommodate our new Asahi Linux drive here. So you can kind of see here that it's working in the background. The macOS side has already partitioned this in half already so that the macOS side has 500 gigabytes. It's really up to you how much space you want to dedicate to the Asahi Linux partition. So just after a few minutes, it says here resize complete, press enter to continue. So just press return, collecting partition information. And now it's saying what we can do now is reinstall an OS into the free space, resize an existing partition or quit without doing anything. So now that we have the partition ready, we're going to press F and then press return. So the one that I'm going to be choosing today is Asahi Remix 39 with KDE Plasma. So that's a desktop user interface environment. So I'm going to select one and then press return. So how much space should be allocated to the new OS? So I'm going to enter the word max to take up all of this space that we've already allocated to the new partition. Press return. So it's asking us to name our partition. I'm just going to call this one Asahi. Press return. So all of this stuff is happening, creating a new stub for Mac OS name Asahi. And now it's basically downloading and installing the operating system Asahi Linux Fedora with KDE Plasma, this computer. Now it's saying it's setting up the recovery volume. So you can see that this is added the EFI partition, the boot partition, and now it's installing the operating system. Okay, so after that's done, it's asking us for a password. So just type in your Mac username password again, and we're gonna press return. And then now it's setting the new operating system Asahi Linux as the default boot volume. So it's saying here installation successful. It's asking us if we want to report or install. So let's just provide data to the Asahi Linux team. So here it's saying you to be able to boot into the OS, you need to complete one more step. So I'm gonna press return. So it says here we need to follow these steps. One, wait for 25 seconds. Press and hold the power button to power on the system, release it to get into the startup options menu, wait for the volume list to appear and then choose Asahi. Once the Asahi Linux installer screen appears, follow the prompts. So just make sure to make a note of these steps. And here we're going to press return to continue here. So I'm going to press enter. I'm going to wait for the computer to fully shut down. So I'm going to give this 25 seconds for it to completely power off. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the power button until we get the startup menu screen coming up. So I'm going to press this, hold this down. And it says here, continue holding full startup options. So just let that finish. And now we can let go because it just says loading startup options and we're ready to move on. So now we have the option here. We can select the Asahi installer here. We can use the keyboard as well. Select it and press return. So I'm just going to make this window bigger so you can read it. So it says here, you'll see some messages advising you that you are changing your security level of your system. These changes only apply to your Asahi Linux install and are necessary to install a third party OS. So the important thing is that the security level of your macOS install will not be affected. So this is going to prompt us for our login credentials twice. And these are from our macOS account. So here I'm going to press enter to continue. So now what we're going to do is to type in the password for our user on our Mac. Again, you won't be able to see anything until you've typed it in, press return. So it's saying here, local policy update is in progress. Please wait. So now it's saying here, by setting a custom boot object, you'll be putting your system into permissive security. Are you sure you want to do this? Press Y, press return. You're going to type in our username and of our computer, and then type in the password on the macOS side, press return. So now it's saying here, installation is complete. Press enter to reboot. So you can see here the Asahi Linux turning up here. And then there's the commands here on the top left. Now we have the Asahi Linux login screen ready right now. So we're going to go ahead and go through the standard setup, select some British English. 
press next. Time zone is London, press next. And then now we set up our username and password, press next, and then press set up, and then all done. So now we're logging in and we're in KDE Plasma on Asahi Linux. So the first thing that you might notice is that the screen doesn't quite look correct. I think there's some color space issue when viewing this through HDMI on my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. But rest assured, this actually looks fine when viewing this on the Mac screen. So one of the first things that you're gonna do when you actually have Asahi Linux set up is actually go into the start menu here and do a refresh of all of the drivers. So you wanna go into the start menu and then type in the word console k-o-n this is basically the equivalent of terminal on fedora and basically within this window we want to use this command sudo dnf upgrade so dnf is basically the fedora method of installing packages and this is basically going to upgrade and refresh any kind of drivers that you already have installed so here i'm going to press return we're going to type in our sudo password press return and then this is going to download and install any kind of updates or changes that have been made this also includes anything that you've already installed. For example, I just installed Prism Launcher and that's updating too. Here it's asking us whether they want to proceed, press yes. We're basically upgrading all these things, but if you're running this for the first time, then it's going to basically download all of the updated graphics drivers, including OpenGL 4.6. So if you're anything like me and you want to test out OpenGL 4.6 on Asahi Linux, then unfortunately there are not many games which actually work on the ARM64 chip under Linux and are compatible with Asahi Linux. However, one option that does work pretty well is Minecraft. So today I'm just going to show you quickly how to install Minecraft via the Prism Launcher. So I'll leave a link in the description for the prismlauncher.org website. And then under the download section, I'm going to scroll down and find the Fedora section here, which contains the console commands that we need in order to install Prism Launcher. So at the time of recording, the latest stable release isn't actually working on Asahi Linux. We actually need to be using the Prism Launcher nightly. If you need to update or overwrite a previous install, you need this double dash allow erasing command at the end as well. And then just press Y and return in order to actually download Prism Launcher. So once that's done, we basically just go up to the start menu in Fedora and then we type in the word Prism. And then basically we do a standard Prism launcher install, go through all of these setup process, check your language. We'll select an ARM64 optimized version of Java. You might want to tweak the amount of RAM. Then all you need to do is to add your Microsoft account, create an instance and install any mods that you might want. So once we're in the game, we can press the F3 key or you might need to use the function F3. And then you can see all of the kind of back end details. But here it gives a little bit of insight onto the back end of how this game is working. In this section here, you can see that this is OpenGL 4.6 core profile. So basically we're making good use of the latest version of OpenGL that's compatible on any Apple Silicon Mac hardware. However, the real interesting test is showing how Asahi Linux compares against Minecraft running on Mac OS. So on the right, we have Asahi Linux with OpenGL 4.6 and on the very same hardware, we have the Mac OS version of Minecraft running OpenGL 4.1. They're both using ARM64 versions of Java 17. We're running at 4K resolution using using sodium, iris, render distance 20, simulation distance 12, and no shaders are being used. What's kind of surprising is that in this particular test, Asahi Linux is pretty much trouncing the macOS version with substantially higher frame rates on average. Like I said, this is on the exactly the same hardware, the same mods, the same settings, same everything. And this might possibly be due to the fact that we are using a higher level of OpenGL. However, if we go to more intensive scenes, so this is a benchmark map, this part is probably a lot more CPU intensive. So that's probably where the bottleneck is and which is why we're getting very similar performance on both ends. Not really enough difference to really say whether Asahi Linux or Mac OS runs this game better. However, if we turn on shaders, for example, here we're using complementary reimagine shaders. I've got the profile set to low. Shaders tend to be a lot more GPU intensive. So you can see here that the macOS side is performing way better than Asahi Linux. This just goes to show that there is a lot of performance left on the table for Asahi Linux, especially when it comes to the GPU side. Nevertheless, this is still really impressive considering the fact that all of these drivers, all of this work has been done by reverse engineering. There's been no documentation coming from Apple. This is all work completed by a very small team. It's constantly working and improving Asahi Linux. For example, Alyssa, one of the Asahi Linux developers has mentioned that they're already working on a new register allocator, which improves performance on some workloads by 10 times. So we can look forward to some pretty big improvements in performance as time goes on. So this also extends to Nintendo Switch emulation use Using the emulator Ryujinx, which doesn't work too badly on a select few titles. So this is Rayman Legends Definitive Edition. Many games that I tried wouldn't actually boot, but one that did surprise me was the Super Mario Odyssey, which seems to run okay, but with plenty of graphical issues and a lot of slowdown as well. A lot of the performance issues are likely going to be fixed in a future update to Asahi Linux, and it's being worked on right now. 
I also tested out Mario Kart Wii running through the emulator called Dolphin, which ran okay. And also God of War Ghost of Sparta running through PPSSPP. Performance isn't even close to what you could get on the macOS side running the same emulators. But like I said, fixes for these issues are being worked on right now and could even potentially eventually surpass the macOS performance. There's also a plethora of other games you can test. For example, these native ARM64 Linux games, which are free. For example, this is the strategy game Zero AD. And here I'm playing the game Zenotech. I'm actually playing online. This is a free multiplayer shooter based on the Quake engine. It only utilizes OpenGL 2.1, but it's cool to see that this works. Anyway, it's really exciting to see what's now possible through Asahi Linux on the Mac. And I'm really looking forward to future development on this project. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.